To get started, you'll need to have your program open. Most versions of Photoshop will not have a screen like this, but if yours does, simply click on the Edit and Enhance Photos button and it will take you to a screen like this. Some versions of Photoshop Elements will have a quick fix screen. If you get to this screen, that is not where you want to go. It does not have enough tools and the palettes are different. Make sure you click on the full edit and you'll be at the right place. Most versions of Photoshop will take you here automatically. You can use any version of Photoshop. It doesn't matter if the version you have is free, cheap, or expensive, they will all work and all of the tutorials on this CD will apply to each version. Your Photoshop screen may look different, that's okay. It may look something like this, or different still, as long as your program looks similar with the toolbar on the side and the palettes on the right, you're in the right place. I'm back in Elements 5.0 for this tutorial. I'm going to open a picture I created to help explain layers better. We all know that in paper scrapbooking you can mix and match your papers, pictures, and embellishments all you want. In paper scrapbooking, if you want to put an embellishment like a flower down, before you lay your picture down, you can simply move your flower above your picture if that's what you want, right? Although we don't necessarily refer to our paper scrapbooks as multiple layers, that's exactly what they are. A series of layers that you can move and change individually. It's the very same thing on the computer. In Photoshop, you'll view your layers over here in the Layers palette. These other palettes are very useful, but I'm going to minimize them for this tutorial so we can focus on the layers a little bit easier. Keep in mind that if your Layers palette is not on the right-hand side of your screen, you can find it by clicking Windows and then Layers. There are several other palettes that you can find here as well. I'm not going to click on Layers this time because it's already open. To be able to show you how to work with Layers, I first need to show you how to open a file. To find any of the papers available on the Digital Scrapbook Memory CDs, first you'll need to make sure your disk is in the CD drive. Then click File and open. Go to your computer and find the disk with the CD inside of it. This is the Playground CD. At this point, things may work slightly different on your computer. I'm working on Windows XP. You may have a different operating system, but the concept is the same. To view thumbnails on Windows XP, click on this icon, then click on Thumbnails. You'll have to figure it out how to do this on your own operating system. Many CDs, like this Playground CD, have hundreds of paper, stickers, and embellishments that you can mix and match together to make your scrapbook pages. The beginner CDs have the least amount of papers, stickers, and embellishments, but all of the CDs can be used together to mix and match all you want. I can search through these files to find what I want, or I can go somewhere else on my computer to find my personal pictures and open them up the same way. My personal pictures are found in My Documents, then My Pictures. Yours may be somewhere else on your computer. You'll have to find where they are, and then you can open them up. For this layout, we're going to create next, My Files Are On My Desktop, in a folder I call Princess. Now, you typically are never going to save your files in a certain spot for one single layout, but I've done this to make this tutorial go a little bit smoother and easier for me. I'm going to go ahead and open up my first paper. This is the paper from Collection 1. The next thing I'm going to do is open up another paper. File, Open. Then I'm going to search through my computer for the pictures on my paper, whatever I want. This time I want to take the textured gray paper. I'm going to open that up. Sometimes they kind of cover each other up, so you can just take this top bar and move it down so they're side by side. Sometimes, though, what will happen is it will open up like this, where you can't see anything underneath. If that's the case, you'll want to click on this little icon called Cascade Windows. By clicking on that, it will cascade the windows, allowing you to see the file side by side. The Cascade Windows button may not be right here on your screen. It may be over just a tiny bit, 
but it's going to be in this general vicinity. It is the square on square button. Try not to forget that because I would say this is the most common mistake that people make when they get started. They are so excited to get started and then when they can't see their files they get frustrated. But this is all you have to do to be able to see them. Now I'm going to go ahead and use the move tool. The move tool is located right here in your toolbox. Your toolbox may look different but it will be here. Your toolbox may not be in color or your tools might be side by side, but the move tool will still be here. Click on this file and then drag it over to the next. I'm going to pull this layout down to where I want it to be and then I'll show you what happened. Originally, this paper here was called a background paper and this one was also called a background paper, but when I moved it over to this file, it turned into a layer one. So now this file, is going to be our layout where we're going to start creating. It's going to have several layers as we go. Now I'm going to open my picture. File, open. Now remember to make this tutorial faster for me, I put all of my pictures and embellishments in the same file. You typically will not do that. The move tool is still selected and I just click and put it over here. You can see that it's now a layer two as well as over here where it was originally a background. I can go ahead and close these papers or leave them open if I want. However, if your computer is slower, you'll definitely want to close out as much as you can in the background. File, open again. This time I'm going to bring over this flower. I'll pull it over and place it where I want. Let's add one more thing to this layout. We're first going to go to File, then Open, and I'm going to choose this 12-inch edge. It's kind of a fun, grungy edge from Collection 2. That pink flower was also from Collection 2, and the gray papers are from Collection 1. Hold down the Shift key while you click and drag the frame over to your layout. Holding Shift will place the frame exactly in the center, which puts the frame exactly on the outside, just like I wanted it to. I can drag around the corner here so you can see the edges a little better. It's just a fun thing and it looks kind of neat, kind of a painted look. I'm going to go ahead and close out some of these other files again so our computer screen is not so cluttered. You will notice over here in the layers palette that there are several layers now. We've got the background, layer one, two, three, four. Now the background has different characteristics. It typically cannot be moved around. When you get more advanced, there is more ways to duplicate this layer, but we won't talk about that now. For now, just know that anything on top of your background layer, you can mix and match and move around all you want. Because they're individual layers, you can click on any of them and move them around as you please. Now, if I want my flower to be underneath my picture when I am paper scrapbooking, what would I do? I would simply take the flower layer and put it under the picture layer. It's so simple and if you remember that and remember that computer scrapbooking is based on the same terms, then you'll be fine. There isn't a lot you can't do on the computer that you couldn't do with paper scrapbooking because of the flexibility with layers. So we have my picture layer here and we have my flower layer here. I can put it completely underneath the picture or anywhere I want. It's going to be there. If I want it back on top, I can do that too. And also notice that when I was on the bottom, layer two was on top of layer three. It doesn't matter where the layers are. The layer numbers one, two, three, and four, it doesn't matter. It just numbers the layers in the order you drag it over to your layout. You can change it, you can even change the names by double clicking and then typing somewhere new. We'll name this the flower layer. I'll just click here and now it's renamed. A common problem that people will make is they will try to drag their layers where they can't go. If you get this little no symbol, that means you can't drag it there. But anywhere else where there's this little hand, you can absolutely drop it there. And as you can see, the flower comes up above the picture again. Now I want to show you this eyeball icon here. This is a fun thing. It indicates the layer visibility. If it is off, you can't see your layer in the layout. If it's on, 
and you can see it. That's a really great tool. If you put something on your layout, you can say, do I like it or do I not? You can go back and forth with that as many times as you want. If you turn off the layer visibility, you can keep going as long as you're working on your project and simply come back and click on that little icon and it'll still be there. So you can choose to keep it or not to keep it at any time. If you want to, you can even drag it up to the trash can here. If I drop my layer into the trash can, it will go away. But I don't want to do that right now. I want to show you what will happen when I click on this new layer button. When I drop this layer there, it will duplicate my layer. See how there are two here? Well, there's also two here. Now I can change the color or size of this one. I can do whatever I want because they're individual separate layers. In most versions of Photoshop, these icons right here in the layers palette are actually going to be down at the bottom. So just keep that in mind. They may look slightly different, but the new layer button in the trash can will look very similar and you will be able to figure this out pretty easy. I'm excited for you. You're going to have a lot of fun scrapbooking. Continue watching the videos and you'll learn a lot. Watch the template video next, then move on to the layout videos.